Hi folks, we had a forum member over on our NYC CNC forum ask how to drill the holes on the end of this approximately 12 inch by 12 inch plate. And what makes them tricky is those holes are at an angle. Now, if you are fortunate enough to have, say, a big horizontal CNC machine or fourth axis large enough to hold this, or even a bridge port where you could hang the part off the edge of the bridge port table, or even tilt the head on a bridge port, for sure, that's a great way to do this. But what I wanted to do was explore a way of potentially doing this fairly well with more common or inexpensive tools. Now, of course, the accuracy of the whole location, diameter, and the material is going to change how effective this is. But what I wanted to show was the idea of making use of a 3D printer to print a jig that can help us hold the drill accurately and correctly to correctly drill this feature. Another good tip if you're newer to Fusion 360 is if I want to look at this hole head on, so I can click the face that it's perpendicular to, and at the bottom of our screen, there's this look at command. It's the second one from the left, and that puts us head on looking at that feature. And it kind of gives you another idea of the angle of that hole. So I've created a new component called Jig. I'm gonna look at my part from the left-hand side. P for project. That's asking me to pick a plane to start my projection on. I'll just use the edge of the part, and I'll project the sides of the part. Again, if you're new to CAD or CAM, what Project does, it just gives us the sketch dimensions of the feature that we just clicked. I'll then hit L for line. I'm gonna sketch from the left side, over, up, over, down, and over there. I've now completed a sketch that's totally enclosed. It's using the lines I just created as well as that project. And you'll notice I intentionally made this line the wrong angle. I like doing that when I'm kind of moving fast and uh, to make sure I don't accidentally forget to finish this. So I'll now choose parallel and I'll make this top face parallel to this face. Not actually mission critical for the task at hand here, but I like it nevertheless. And we can adjust the dimensions as, as see fit. You'll notice that the left side kind of auto snapped to the B coplanar with this, or collinear, I should say, but it's adjustable. So we can fix that with things like vertical horizontal. And of course, you, again, you can dimension it as you, as you see fit. But the punchline here is we're going to extrude this feature. Now, one of the cool things, we don't have to start our extrude right there. We can start from an offset from a profile plane of say half an inch. Oops, let's go negative half an inch. And we'll extrude it negative one inch. Click okay. And we've now got our rough shape. Again, you could improve this as you see fit or what works for say your printer or your part. Now I'll pick the top face of my jig hit P for project, and I'll turn off the visibility of the jig, click on this circle, and that puts the a hole at the top of my jig, which I can then extrude all the way through it. So is this perfect? No, and again, it may not be accurate enough if you're trying to hold your drill location to weigh, say within a thousandth of an inch or, or some sorts, but wouldn't be too difficult to print something like this. It gives you a fair amount of rigidity and alignment, and you could use basic hand tools from a tape measure to calipers, or even 3D printing an extension to locate the sort of left to right or X dimension of the fixture on the plate. But if you wanna take it one step further, I mentioned this would be fairly rigid. Yes, rigid compared to hand holding a drill or using a drill press, but one easy way to make this better would be to purchase a drill bushing from McMaster. Uh, and you could 3D print your hole with a press fit so that you could lightly press fit that drill bushing in, or if these holes had to be drilled then tap, I would leave that bushing with a sort of a very, very light press fit, enough that you could actually remove the bushing and you could purchase a separate size bushing that would act as a tap guide. Because frankly, if you need to drill and tap this, I would definitely want them both uh, led into this angle with a guide. Another tip I'd recommend is 
if you look at uh, McMaster, gives a great explanation. Drills with a split point keep the drill centered without a pilot hole. Basically, when you start feeding that drill into that material, having that split point is going to help minimize the drill's willingness to walk around. Or the other idea, it's actually not a perfect example of this part because of how small this ledge is, but there are these optical center punches. They're one of the first machining tools I bought 10 years ago. And they have a black pad that's about an inch, inch and a half in diameter. And in it, you have a sort of target shaped magnifier and it has a very small black point on it. You can line that point up with a, a crosshair mark of from, that's made from calipers like a scribe or even a Sharpie mark uh, or there's some other mark and then pull this glass tube out after it's lined up and then use the center punch. And you can uh, arguably get a hole within, you can debate, but you know, certainly within a few thou is a reasonable expectation. Again, that could really help locate the hole. I'd still wanna use a jig like this though to help guide the drill in. So as always folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. Take care, see you soon.